Today, I'm going to be looking at price elasticity in digital media, and in particular, looking at two main concepts. The first is, what is price elasticity of demand? And the second is, why is it different within digital media? Also, I'm going to be focused on price changes for goods sold by a sales team in contrast to programmatic or auction-based pricing. I'm not going to use many equations today. I'm going to stick to words as much as possible. The common definition is price elasticity of demand is a measure of the change in consumption of a product in relation to the change in its price. In the simplest possible terms, this is how demand responds to changes in price. Let's look at an example of how prices and demand change for a given product in the table. When the price is $25, the demand is 1,000 units. When the price doubles to $50, we see that the demand drops considerably, down from $1,000 to $100. And when the price further increases to $75, we see that the demand decreases again down to 20 units. The first thing to note is that this is consistent with what we see in the real world, that as the demand drops, as the price rises. The other important thing to note is that this is not a linear relationship. By that, what we mean is that for a one unit price change, the amount of demand change is not consistent. There is a much greater drop in demand at lower prices than at higher prices. Graphically, the situation might look like this for digital media, where the price is in CPM and the units are impressions. The challenge for the producer or the publisher is to find the price that maximizes the area of price times impressions because this is the revenue. A couple of terms that you will hear in conjunction with price elasticity are price elastic and price inelastic. The definition of price inelastic is that large changes in price lead to small changes in demand. And in contrast, price elastic means that small changes in price lead to large changes in demand. An example of a price inelastic market is the market price for gasoline at the industry level. The reason for this is that as the market price increases, for most reasonable ranges of prices, demand won't change very much. Part of this is related to the lack of substitutes. If the price of gasoline gets too high, you can't simply choose to switch your car to natural gas or coal and many people are unwilling to defer using their car for most travel. A price elastic product tends to be one where the market is very competitive. So if I raise the price, I will see a very significant price drop. Or it may also refer to instances where consumers can defer their spending. For this reason, luxury goods are often held up as an example of where we see elastic pricing. Ironically, while my example for price inelastic is the market price for gasoline, an example where you might see an elastic product is the price of gasoline at one particular gas station. For example, if I'm an Exxon station and I am charging $4 per gallon and there's a Chevron across the street also charging $4. If the Exxon charges, raises its prices to $5 while the Chevron stays at $4, then the demand drop at the Exxon station would be significant. As we bridge into thinking about the implications for digital advertising, it is important to keep in mind the concept of what options buyers have. The reason that gasoline at the industry level is considered inelastic is because few people have options for other things that they might do. Americans in particular are very resistant to delaying filling up their car, delaying travel, or using other fuels. 
At the individual service station level, it is elastic because there are so many other options for where people can fill up their car. Let's consider a digital publisher. They're selling an individual unit on their page. Perhaps it is the banner at the top of the page and they want to sell a takeover for the day. If the price gets increased, the marketer will do a number of things. They may delay the spending. They may choose to buy a different ad unit from the same publisher. They may instead change their buying and buy from a digital, different digital publisher. Or they may move the spend to a different medium. For example, not by digital mediums at all, instead by television or print. As you can see, there are a range of options and this would lead us to infer that most digital media is relatively price elastic. And in fact, this has been largely my experience. The challenge is that most publishers think that their site is unique and that there is, in fact, no substitute for it. The other thing to think about when we're considering price response in digital media is that it's important to think about total revenue or money earned from an advertiser versus price per impression. In many situations, particularly when a consumer is buying a good, they will simply increase what they choose to pay. In the example of gasoline, if the price goes up from $4 to $5 per gallon, they'll still buy the same amount of gas. However, in digital marketing, many or most companies allocate a fixed budget to a marketing campaign, for example, a million dollars. So let's consider an example where a price increase may not lead to greater revenue. If we have the situation where the publisher has an advertising budget, sorry, the advertiser has a budget of a million dollars, but the publisher is charging a price of $10 CPM, this translates into a million impressions that would be bought. What happens then if the publisher raises the price from $12 CPM to $12.50 CPM, so in other words, a price increase of 25%. If the advertiser does not change their budget, then they're still spending a million dollars. The impressions bought will decrease from 100 million down to 80 million. So the challenge here for publishers is that they may be making more per unit, but unless they're also selling more units, they may not be making more money overall. And this is a real situation that can occur if the publisher has a limited number of advertisers that they have relationships with. And it's why it's the most important thing for a publisher to do is to monitor the true demand changes, in this case, whether budgets or total revenue is changing in response to a price change, rather than just looking at the average price changes.